Welcome to part three of the uh, Curator and SecureX uh, series, right? Uh, in today's video, I'm going to show you um, how to basically install the SecureX uh, Threat Response app, right? Uh, in Curator, right? So um, Curator has all these apps that they integrate with other third party uh, security solution, right? So, uh, there's two parts to to um, you know uh, the integration, right? Uh, in this video, to keep it short, I'm going to show you how to uh, add the Curator, um, sorry, add the SecureX app into Curator, right? There's a few things that I will explain, right? Uh, uh, especially uh, a few a bit of tweaking in the test environment uh, for you. Right, so let's move over to the uh, Curator login page. As you can see, I'm right here. Okay, one thing you'll notice that, uh, you know, it's no longer the IP address here, right? Uh, as I, you know, uh, continue the integration and the videos, I'm tidying up my environment as well. So I've basically mapped uh, uh, Curator to the IP address that you see previously, right? So first of first thing first, let's move over right uh, to the admin page. Uh, let's take a quick look at the uh, you know warnings whether there's anything uh, any er major errors right. The automatic updates is something that uh, I will have try and fix it sometime later, um, but you know it's not critical because it's it's pretty new and uh, we we know how to update the necessary features and packages right manually if uh, anything fails. Right, in terms of the warnings, we're gonna look at it. Uh, there's a part on IP, source IP address, which I believe has been fixed. That should be okay. So um, no major challenges, right? So that means we're good. Uh, you know, let's take a look at the source, log source. Uh, okay, the status of the MQ is still good. Uh, there's some warning there, uh, but we will look at it uh, in a bit. So first of all, let's move on to the extension management, which is where you will basically be um, installing the apps, right? So let's go in there. As you can see, you will be able to see all the items that you have in your environment. Uh, by default, the Curator Assistant app is being installed, right? We can check out the install, not an install, nothing there, right? So this is the place that you go to basically uh, download the uh uh, any other apps, right, that, that you want to basically add on to Curator. So from here, let's click on the link. It should bring you to the uh, uh, App Exchange Hub, right? So uh, uh, you need a login for this. I've already logged in, right? So so uh, that's okay, right? So uh, immediately it brings you to where, uh, you know, the apps are, right? So you can see there's a lot of apps that are uh, um, added on, right? Uh, it's like add-on for Curator. So today we're going to try and install the uh, SecureX uh, app, right? So when you do SecureX, you actually get, uh, you know, the SecureX Threat Rest 1 app right here. Okay, one thing to take note of is the memory requirement, right? So this is uh, key. Okay, this is one key thing that to take note, right? So uh, regardless of whether it's production or... Uh, um, you know, demo environment, right? Uh, do take note of this as you will need uh, uh, enough memory, right? We're talking about RAM here for you to install the apps, right? So uh, if I'm not wrong, right? So do check it out when you're uh, doing the implementation, right? Uh, in a production environment, um, by default, Curator CE Edition at least allocate about 10% of the overall memory for uh, apps, right? Uh, your dashboards, your Curator assistants, and what we're going to install the SecureX Threat Response app, right? It takes up, uh, it gets um, installed to that allocated memory, right? Which is 10%. So in a default setup, which we're going to swing over and check it out. Right. Um, in a default setup, right. So uh, let's look at the memory. We do a top command. You can see that we only um, allocate six gig of RAM memory for this uh, EX exercise. So by default, it, it gives you the minimum uh, memory size, right? So 
just to take note of that, uh, another command that is useful is this command, right? Uh, So it's a uh, an SQL command uh, to basically query the Postgres uh, database, right? So what this does, it actually queries what are the installed, right, application, the install application, as you can see here, uh, inside Curator and the memory. So 500 meg of memory is allocated to Curator. So if we do the math, right, uh, we have six gig of RAM, right? Uh, six GB of RAM, and then uh, ten percent should be six hundred meg, right? So effectively, after taking away uh five hundred meg, we are only left with a hundred meg, right? So, uh, based on the um documentation, right? Uh it's not enough, right? We need 200 meg. But just to test it out, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and try, right? So go to MS Intention, click on Add, right? Um, when you browse Curator, uh, I've already downloaded the zip. I'm going to basically open, right? You can do install immediately, right? Uh, to, to kick off the installation. But what I'm going to do is going to add it in first, right? Add this in. You can see that it is not installed, right? If you go into more detail, it gives you a little bit of the information. And then uh, what are the custom application, right? That, that are there, right? So uh, you can read the documentation, which I'll show you later uh, for a little bit more detail. But what I'm going to try to do now is to install. Now you kickstart the validation, right? Uh, checking whether you know uh, the uh, extension is valid, you know, etc., etc. Right. Once you validate that, you can then try and install. This is the part where the memory uh, requirements uh, kick in, right? Or the warning that you do not have memory kick in, um, you know, uh, in, in our explanation early on. So you can see we do not have memory uh, available memory like, like I've mentioned, right? Uh, just because our installation is a lot. Uh, you know, more compact for our demo environment. So what do we need to do, right? So there are a few options, right? So you can always go and uh, basically, uh, uh, you know, increase your, your VM uh, size, right? Which is the recommended way, even though, uh, even if, it, if this is a, a demo, right uh or, or if you are using it for a uh, demo and test right but what i'm going to show you is another non uh disclose right uh a command right and and i i guess there's a valid reason right so a very very big disclaimer right uh on this is that you know uh never never try this um uh, yep uh, uh at home right so i'm going to have a big disclaimer do not Right, do this right in production, right? Okay, it's important because you do not want to mess around with uh on that with in a production environment, right? Do not do this in production, even for your demo or lab environment, do it with care, right? Because you know you're gonna basically uh you know cause some failure, right? Uh if, if you do not do it correctly, right? Uh but like I said it, since it's a test environment, it's not a big uh issue for me right so what we're going to do is we're going to go to the global global config right so go to curator store uh config services and then staging right probably there's a reason this put in staging right there's this file Okay, that is, let's take a quick look. There's a lot of files here. There, there is this file called mva.config, right? As you can see here. Okay, this is the one thing that we want to um, uh, edit, right? With any good implementation, always make a backup, 
of the config. Okay, we're gonna um, do a nano mva dot config. Oops. Oh, I do not have nano in here. Okay, we can do vi right. So under app connection timeout. Okay, do an insert. Okay, we're gonna add this command app underscore console underscore memory underscore percent right so I'm going to do a, a quick uh, calculation right so at 10 percent we have 100 Mac left right so if I do a 20 percent of a, a, a 6 gig memory uh, I would have 1 point uh, 2 gig, right? And if I minus or 5, right? it should be enough. So let's move it down to 20%. Okay? Uh, no, you don't need the percent. Just check the command app underscore console underscore memory underscore percent. Right? Just make okay, just do your spell check. Right? And that's one thing that uh, I realize, you know, a lot of mistakes are being made. Okay? So it's percent equals to 20, which is 20% of the uh, overall memory that I have, right? Right now, I do have about 200 meg free. Okay, so that, that might be an issue, but let's try this. And then if there is not enough memory, maybe I'll expand the uh, memory or location on my EXXI. Once that is done, right, escape, colon, write to write the change and quit and force it, right? So this that's done, right? So after this, you, you need to reboot the QRadar machine, right? So let's go back here. Okay, first you need to deploy the change. Okay, as we can see, we have done this and then we need to deploy the change. Okay, I'm gonna cut out some part of this video, right? To make sure that uh, I try and keep the video short. The deployment, right? The memory, uh, a location should be changed now to 20% uh, of the overall memory that you have, right? So let's go back to extension management, click on SecureX, and then click on install, right? This will take a little bit of time, right? Uh, we'll install, okay, and then let's click install, right? So while we're doing the installation, let's hop over to the... Uh, Let's try and uh, do a quick check, right? We can see that right now it's creating, right? So uh, as referred by the manual, uh, it's going to take out 200 meg of memories, right? And the total memory will then be uh, 700 meg, right? As you can see, the memory here, right, is very, very heavily depleted, right? We have uh, now less than... 100 meg of memory, free memory, right? So uh, after this, in the next tutorial, uh, I will probably try and increase the overall VM memory. Okay, so let's hop over. Okay, so once you see that it is done, uh, if we go back to extension management, you will see that it's still installing, right? Okay, it takes a, a while. Okay, we can see that it's installed now. Okay, so technically after you install, you should actually see the uh, threat response app here, right? So uh, it's not showing up yet because we need one more step, right? So we can either restart the server or uh, what I'm going to try and do here is to deploy a full configuration, right? And then let's click continue. Uh, technically, after this deployment, the uh, app for SecureX threat response should appear, right? If it doesn't, right, then uh, we will need to then uh, reboot QRadar for the effect to take place. Okay, uh, we'll restart. And then what you can see here is that you'll see that there'll be a Cisco SecureX threat response application uh, under the application tab, right? Okay, so that's pretty much how you basically deploy uh, any app in 
uh, IBM Curator. Now we're going to configure the SecureX Threat Response app in Curator. So scroll down to the bottom of the admin screen and click on the Cisco SecureX Threat Response app under apps. This is the place that we need to configure the parameters in Curator. Now inside Curator console, go to administration and generate a API client here. Give it a name. And for the scope, you need to basically select and reach read and inspect read. Give it a description so that you know what it is API for. Once that is done, right, you just click on add new client. It'll be a new client ID and client's password will be created. So treat this like any user name and password. Protect it from any exposure. Uh, or anybody stealing the username and password because this is the key to uh, access the SecureX integration. Now go back to the extension settings page and then paste in the client ID and the password. And then choose the region that your SecureX is in and then click save. In my case, it's APJC. Next, let's head over to the log activity page, just to show you that after the integration, um, you know, you can immediately use uh, the threat response integration to basically do quick remediation. Okay, so I'm going to add a filter and just choose the uh, log source, which is Cisco M that we have created uh, in our previous video, right? Demo M is the name of the log source that we have given, right? I'm going also to filter in the last three days. And you can see, right, these are the threats uh, that were detected and quarantined in our previous uh, tutorial. So over here, under more option, you can see investigate with threat response, right? Okay, we need to allow the pop up. You can open up the pop up, right? I think the initial part uh, always have some issue when you are logging in, right? It doesn't bring you to the website directly but not to worry right uh, once you are login you go to the more option and investigate with cisco Tr secure extra response again you'll see that the machine right the target will show up over in the investigation page and this is where you can do your uh threat response you do your isolation and etc right uh, this will be for another video right so stay tuned for more of the videos to come thank you very much for watching uh that completes the cisco uh secure x cisco app for endpoint and curator integration video take care everyone and stay safe